Well, that was quite a hiatus. You can hear that. Hello, neighbors. I've set off so many alarms in this street. Not very neighborly of me, but... Other than getting a new exhaust and putting a bath on this thing, there's not much to do. And, uh, and that's not happening. It's not that I've been riding, I have. It's just... You know, moving. Buying a house, moving. It's kids, you guys know how it is. Parents visiting. Uh, constant issues. I have not made any changes to the bike since the last video. Because it's just too good the way it is. Suburbia, but it's not cookie cutter suburbia. You know, and like every house looks exactly the same. Oh, it just hurts to pay for something like that. And you can tell, man, anybody who rides a cruiser or any motorcycle for that time, most of them tend to be a little bit individualistic, a little quirky. And I don't think they sit well in neighborhoods where every house looks the same. It's just a, a bit of a soul steal, if you know what I mean. Gain some soul right now. We head a little east. Nice windy road by a lake. I think this road you know, we head towards is called uh, what's it called? Something something delicioso, if not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, you heard me. You heard me. I'm I'm not way off. It is in that realm. It's gonna be exactly delicioso, but it's something something that sounds like delicious in Spanish. Let's go find delicious. Delish. Me and the auto tune, I could have sworn I, I did put a new filter on this thing. It wasn't, you know, recently, but in the past few months, I put uh, you know the the KN, the Harley KN equivalent filter on there. What do they call it? They call it Screaming Eagle, of course. But it just seems like a regular KN, you know, it has that mesh that you can wash, all that good stuff. And I had the bike half auto-tuned with the old filter on it. I hadn't fully completed it. And uh, it just didn't seem right. It just, it seemed a little doggy. Little doggy, low speeds wasn't that great. Didn't seem to have the punch at the higher end either. And I just, uh, I retuned it with the new filter. I just started from scratch. I can tell you, it feels better. Now, I'm surprised that a filter would make that much difference. This isn't an intake, it's just a filter. It's just a filter element. But, you know, I'm big on perception, as you guys know, and placebo and all that stuff. It could be as simple as the days I rode the bike prior, I'd ridden the bike too much, you get used to the power, and it just wasn't wasn't kicking me. Or I was just in a bad mood. Who knows, you know, all that can affect the way it feels to you. I'm not quantifying this with any numbers. But uh, if any of you guys think I'm not crazy, then please let me know. Otherwise, I'll assume you guys think I'm nuts. And I'll continue thinking the same. Oh, come on, guys. This is supposed to be delicious up here. What are you doing to me? I'd open up a little bit after this turn. It's a bad turn, man. Volvo, how are you? Pet dental discounts? I hope so. How else are you going to get a pet in there to get their teeth done? It's just torture. I'm sure it's better for a cat or a dog to have their teeth clean. I'm sure it's better, but, you know, the, these animals do have a lifespan, and it's hard to explain to a cat or a dog, hey, look, I'm not torturing you. You know, let animals be animals, man. I think brushing their teeth is a bit too far. Unless they're just knocking you out the bad breath. I've been there with the dogs. They'll take you right out with that breath. 
that's your if that's your mission so you can tolerate being next to your dog then fine i'll accept that but if you're looking out for your uh your dog having beautiful teeth and uh, preparing your dog for a lifespan of 50 years when unfortunately that's not going to happen you may uh, spend your time better elsewhere yeah, the dog would appreciate it go get it volvo go get it got a little johnny cash playing here perfect day So I have this new neighbor I just moved, as I mentioned. I think he's uh, 19, 20 years old. Nice guy, just started riding bikes like a few weeks ago. What a little 250. The smart guy, I see him practicing all the time. I think uh, he's off to a great start. But I had this question. I don't know how you guys feel about this, but and the same thing applies for at work because I get I guess some younger guys that are they're under me at work and they just started riding or they already already do ride and they want to go for rides. But the problem is this: if you're in a if you're an older person and you know the kid's mother, or thanks, man. Or you're at work and you have people that are under you that like to ride may not be that experienced are you responsible or in any way responsible if there's an issue if they go down they get hurt and not only with you because it goes without saying under those circumstances you get to play it safe you get to ride easy show a good example all that good stuff but you know what if you're seen as one of these people that has encouraged them to ride bikes and and the worst happens. So say one of these people gets killed in a bike or hurts themselves. You get to live with that, you know, knowing that you may have contributed that small percentage. Now I think there's a general culture we have here and that's you get on one of these things, you gotta own it. You gotta you gotta own it yourself. Don't run out of your limits. It doesn't matter what the person around you is doing, you're responsible for your own your own situation. And that's what generally guides me. But you can't ignore the fact that people influence one another constantly. And even though you can justify it by falling back on on that principle, it doesn't make it feel any better, you know? Oh, so this is the road. This is Delicioso. Let me try to get this. There's a sign somewhere. It's going to say it. Paseo Delicias, that's what it is. Paseo Delicias. What does that mean? I mean, it's gotta mean delicious in Spanish. It's gotta mean it's... I don't use the word delicious a lot. In the medical field, I'm not really communicating things that are delicious. It really wouldn't fit in anywhere maybe in my repertoire, but... Uh, look that one up. Oranges, anyone? I gotta say, if it wasn't for this traffic, this pass would be delicious. But what else is new, right? Take my opportunity. Give me green, baby. about this helmet I have. This is a Rai Defiant Pro Cruise helmet. And I love the concept because it has this flip visor. It comes down during the day, it's not a problem. It covers all my vision, it's nice and dark. And I have to put in a dark shield, a clear shield, etc. At night you flip it up. What I've come to realize is 
whether it's, it could be my position, it could be the cruise issue too, because on the BMW in particular, and that's a, that's a super naked bike, S1000R. So I am technically upright, but I, I get into like a, a semi crouch, especially if I'm gonna hit it, you just keep your weight forward, you know? Resist some wheel lift. The thing just flops down on me. And you can imagine if you put, if you're putting your head down, it's gonna push the thing back down because it, it opens up like this and closes like this. So you can imagine that you're asking for it if you're leaning forward if you're on a sport bike, which is why it's called the Pro Cruise something. So I should take that into account when I'm riding a non cruising. But even with this one, if I'm, I'm hitting it pretty good with this one, and I'm getting, I'm sort of hunching in on the bars and, and you know, locking myself in, the head will dip a little bit and it'll close at those times. If I'm cognizant of it, if I'm paying attention to it, it's not much of an issue, it doesn't close that much. But for shoulder checks, you're checking your shoulder, there's something about that, it must be when you swing your head back, you must, I must naturally dip my head, a little, it closes. So on the highway, and I always do a double check on my shoulder on the highway, on the highway when you do a shoulder check, the thing closes on you. So it's at night, you're on the highway, on the bike, and uh, you know, as it is, you gotta make yourself known and have good visibility and watch the road conditions and watch for oil and dirt and water and make sure no one's gonna run into you. But when you suddenly have your visor close on you, so it becomes, it adds darkness to the darkness. It's no picnic. So anybody who's uh, thinking about this helmet, I can say comfort, awesome. Uh, quietness, awesome. You know it's you know it's an Arai, has great technology, has wonderful airflow. It's an awesome helmet. But if you're on a super naked, watch out. Because especially if you do that sort of dip, it might shut that visor on you. And the whole point of getting the Pro Cruise, just get the regular Defiant and change out your lid. I change out your visor, I mean, not your lid. I should change out my lid after saying that. Change your lid. That guy in the Prius smoking a butt, being sketchy. Prius, how sketchy can you be? Woo! See, that's what you watch out for. You got on a bike, man. That's what it's a coma, could have been a death sentence. It's one reason not to go too fast. So it pulls out. They and you had only so much reaction time. Be a bug on his window. But you know how it is, the adrenaline gets pumping, the speed starts feeling slow. The engine makes great noises when you, when you just twist that throttle. Don't care what bike you're on. Except for the scooter I have, it doesn't really care but it's a different issue altogether. It's funny, I get this bike to slow myself down and it has. I mean, I can't, you can only go so fast in this thing because it's just freaking dangerous, but I push it, you know? I just can't let it be. I just can't, I just can't do the limit and be chill. I'm gonna keep pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. Until what? Until I get the gold medal? Is someone gonna give me a medal after this? Adrenaline. Adrenaline, testosterone, all that good stuff. It means it's time for the track. When I mean, that's what's building up on you. See, when I just get off of a track day, I, I tend to not, I don't push on the road too much. I don't want to because I can't come close to hitting that that sweet spot, that intensity, those lean angles and those speeds. You just, you know you can't come close, so you don't even, it's, frankly, you feel a little bit bored on the road. And uh, you gotta inject yourself, you, you feel yourself starting to push on the road, it means it's time for an immersion track day. And that's how you guys convince your wife, your family, your friends, that you gotta get out there. It's for your own safety, it's for the good of the world. 
guys are taking Harleys out there too. Last time I was there, it's like four Harleys out there. All diners. I think three of them were, uh, who were they? Loretta S. And three Loretta S. And there's a fat bomb out there. Fat bomb crash. And I think all of them had apes on them. Anyway, it was refreshing, it was fun. Take your Harley out to the track, just do it. All the sport bike guys will love you, just do it. Have a, have a blast. <clears throat> there are a lot of you guys who ride the cruisers, Harley, whatever. A lot of you guys can ride. And they're gonna be practical to buy, you know, some screaming sports, or comfortable to buy a screaming sports bike. And I know these things are beautiful, they make certain sounds, they're lovely. But, uh, still bring these things to the track man also it's an open it's an open pavement area you just you just push the bike harder than you can anywhere else this guy's nice it's a wave thank you